Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part two of my Apples in a Hat series and in this video we're going to be painting more on the apples and working on the hat. If you want to follow along with traditional materials check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the paint, canvas, and the brushes that I use. The app that I'm going to be using is Corel Painter 2019 and it's going to be on my Surface Pro 3 and so that means it'll be Windows and here I'm working on the apples and I'm adding a little bit of some cadmium red if you're following along with acrylics that would be the color and I'm also adding some alizarin crimson and I just want some different colors of red here. We want a darker color for the shadows on the apple. And we want sort of a, a lighter red for the, where the light's hitting. And then some dioxazine purple color, if you're following along traditionally, for the inside of the hat. And I'm using an opaque acrylic and also the uh, landscape brush that uh, is in the Mystic Mountains Bob Ross pack and like I said before I really recommend this pack because it it has a lot of really good brushes and really good brushes that mimic natural media and so here I'm just adding some color to the hat <clears throat> and I want to add pockets of dark and light on the hat because I'm going to have some flowers to the left of it and the sun will be shining through and letting patches of sunlight through but also it will be shadowed in some parts so for the darker parts you can use um, sort of a yellow ochre color and then add white acrylic gesso and then here I am trying to collapse the layers and one of the things that you have to do when you're uh, working in Corel Painter is you have to hit the shift key and then select the layers that you want to collapse together and it because if you hit drop all then it drops everything to the bottom layer and so you have to do it that other way and make sure that you do because otherwise it, it messes everything up so I actually like other programs that don't uh, do that they just drop to the next layer but this one you have to do it that way and here I'm using some of the airbrushes, the variable splatter brush to give an indication of flowers in the background. So what you want to do is use a whole bunch of different colors. You can use reds, blues, purples, yellow, white. We just kind of want the indication of a bunch of flowers in the background and we'll cover those up with bigger blades of grass. And if you're following along traditionally, just thin those colors with a lot of water and take your toothbrush and splatter it all over the canvas there and try to keep it off of your apples, but just go ahead and put it in the background over all your background colors. And, the, and then here I'm starting to add the individual strands of grass. And if you're following along traditionally, you would take your script brush here I was using the opaque acrylic brush and trying to uh, just make it very small and sort of mimic the script brush. Now there is a script brush variant in here and I use it later on in, the, uh, in this painting but when I was first starting I couldn't remember where it was because there's tons of brushes and it takes a long time to figure out where they all are and you so you just kind of have to play around with this program a lot. And here I decided to f uh, use the horsetail brush. And this is in the expressions pack, I think. And I may have bought this pack or it may have been um, a free offer. One of them you can get for free. And then uh, some of them they have uh, sales on. And I like to get uh, the packs when they're on sale. And I might have gotten this one when it was on sale. I can't remember. But anyway, the horsetail brush works really good. It, it makes it look like um, grass strands and it varies the lengths there. So you don't get a, a uniform look. It really gives it a, a natural nature type look here. And 
it looks an awful lot like a script brush and if you're using your script brush just make these uh, blades of grass with a circular motion and use a very thin mixture of acrylic paint and I'm using a darker green color and so for your acrylics you would probably use the hooker's green color and maybe throw in some phthalo yellow green just to lighten it up a little bit but we just want to keep these sort of individual blades of grass right now and we'll put more in at the end but right now we just kind of wanted to put a few in just to give it sort of a uh the the background look there these are sort of the intermediate strands they're not the final ones but they're going to be the in-between strands of grass and then here I'm adding the apples that are in the grass and you don't have to make these real big in detail just kind of suggest some apples in the grass and you don't have to finish them out you'll just make sort of some half shapes and you'll go back and add some colors and highlights to them later and I'm just kind of working on the uh, grass a little bit more trying to to get a, the edges a little bit smudged you don't want them to to show up on the the hat brim you'll have to kind of go back and and draw those or draw the brim over if you want to just whatever you do but you you don't want to leave a gap between the grass and the hat so and here I want to go ahead and add some flowers in the background now again these are going to be kind of impressionistic because you you're not looking at them real closely so they're going to be just kind of the impression of flowers so just make some petal like shapes look at those flowers in the the photo reference there they're not perfect shapes you can't really see them very clearly so you want just kind of shapes of flowers and you can use your number three round brush if you're following traditionally and you can use the uh, I was using one of these real oil brushes here to do these just trying to get kind of a the look of um, some petals that are irregular looking because you don't want them to look uniform because the flowers are different shapes and here I'm adding a little bit of the purples there and using that as uh, some more flowers in the in the grass there and the others are kind of a light uh, purple and you can use white if you want to they do stand out a little more and they might be a little bit too garish so you might want to not do that and then here I went ahead and made my brush palette as you can see it's right there in the middle of the canvas and what you can do is hit the shift key and then open your brush menu and just drag any brush that you want off onto the UI and it will automatically pop up the brush palette function and then you can drag more and more brushes there and you can have those brushes that you're working with for a certain project and it's really handy that way and as you can see I've got the two inch blender and I've got the real flat brush and the real long bristle and just several of the others that I thought I might use the horsetail brush and I actually put the script brush on there and it's really handy that way because then you don't have to go searching for those brushes all the time and you can name your palette if you want to as well so that you know like you could say uh, apples project one or something for the name of your brush palette and then you can keep it all the time you can save them so anyway here I'm working on the apples and I'm adding different colors of red and if you're following along with your acrylics or your oils you would probably use alizarin crimson for the darker reds and cadmium red light for the lighter colors on the apple and throw in a little bit of uh, yellow ochre mixed with phthalo yellow green for some of the greenish colors on the apple and you just kind of want to go ahead and, and make pockets of dark and light and we'll blend these in better now if you're doing this um, with oils it won't be any problem to blend them in if you do it with acrylics you'll have to do a little bit of some dry brush blending 
but we just kind of want to get the idea of where the highlights are and the dark and the light colors and then here I'm working on the inner hat band and also if you notice in the reference photo you can see the grass through the holes in the straw hat so I'm trying to add a little bit of green next to the apples and just kind of give it a a lattice work look and the hat there and just add some dots of green there and then I'm working a little bit more on the hat band and if you're following along with traditional acrylics probably use burnt umber a darker brown you just want sort of a darker brown for the hat band there and you will also use that to sort of shape the apples so this is the end of part two of my apples in a hat series and in part three we're going to keep on working on the hat and further refining the apples so if you want to see what we do next hit that subscribe button and thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and i will catch you later